Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our uh, Belleville City Council meeting of June the 14th, uh, 2021. And uh, um, if you just wait one quick moment, I'm going to pull up my uh, notes. I want to um, thank everybody uh, for our meeting electronically again today. Our council chambers are currently undergoing a major renovation, which we expect to be completed in time for our next council meeting. We look forward to being together in person again in the near, very near future. I want to thank our city staff for assisting in the setup of this electronic meeting of Belleville City Council. I also want to thank all members of council for their cooperation and flexibility. Um, I have said this uh, and I'll say it again, uh, while we all know the need for cooperation during the best of times, these virtual meetings are difficult and awkward. I look to my colleagues for extra cooperation as we conduct the business necessary for the operations of the city of Belleville. For those watching on the city streaming service or on our YouTube channel or on your TV, I would point out that our agenda and all of the reports are on the city website at www.belleville.ca under the agenda, minutes and live meeting um, button on the left side of the screen. If you click on that, it'll bring you up to a calendar. And if you click on the June 14th um, date on the calendar, that will bring you uh, to today's agenda for today, uh, the agenda for today's meeting. There is a hyperlink inside the agenda as you're looking through it uh, in the event you wanna look at the individual reports that council is considering so that you can follow along. I will call the meeting to order and state that all members of council are present. I am here at city hall and all members are present electronically. I will now ask the um, acting city clerk uh, Ms. Christine Stewart to lead us in a moment of reflection. May we be worthy custodians of all that has been trusted to us. Help us to be concerned only for what will promote good government. May we bring to our council chamber minds that think and hearts that feel always having respect for others so that we may serve the people of our community in a helpful manner and for the good of all. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. Moving on to item number four, disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof. Uh, do any of you have any items you wish to disclose colleagues? Seeing none, we'll move uh, to um, number five, reading and confirmation of the minutes for the regular council meeting of May 25th, 2021 and the regular in-camera meeting of May 25th, 2021. Can I please have a mover and a seconder? Uh, Councillor Alsap and Councillor Feeney. Any questions or comments on those items? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? It's carried, thank you. Uh, there are no deputations today, so we'll move to item number seven, correspondence. And we'll start with 7.1, a letter from Habitat for Humanity. And uh, to get on the floor, I have a resolution that the May 11th, 2021 letter from Habitat for Humanity confirming their interest in continuing with the Habitat Horizon Center be received. Uh, can I get a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Sanderson and Councillor Kelly, any questions or discussion on this item? Councillor Thompson, go ahead. Just, I want to thank the Habitat for Humanity for filing this letter with us. I know I'd asked a couple of months ago about an update. It's great to hear that they're moving ahead. It'll be a benefit to uh, the city of Belleville, our housing development, our goal to reach uh, the number of units we want. So it's great to see it. So I wish them all the best in their pre-planning. Thank you. Anyone else? So the motion's on the floor to receive the letter. All in favor? It's carried. Item number 7.2 is a letter from Don C. Kellaway. And the resolution is that the May 25th, 2021 letter from Don C. Kellaway regarding the addition of a name of a World War II veteran to the city cenotaph be received and, and referred to staff. Um, moved by Councillor Alsap, seconded by Councillor Millette. So um, when we refer to staff uh, colleagues, uh, this will also allow them to take the steps necessary to ensure that uh, this name is appropriate to be, to be added. Um, and there will be some research and working with the same uh, um, type of folks that we dealt with when we added the three additional names of the cemetery from World War I back in 2019. Anybody else have any questions or comments on this item? Call the question, all in favor? It's carried, thank you. 
Item number 7.3, uh, 7.3, letter from the Belleville Chamber of Commerce. Uh, it refers to consent item 8B6. And the resolution is that the June 8, 2021 letter from the Belleville Chamber of Commerce regarding special events and visitor services be received and refer to uh, consent item 8B6. Can I get a mover and a seconder? Councillor Sanderson and Councillor Mollett. Um, I, um, before I ask if anyone has anything they would like to say, I have a quick, um, well, let's let's open it up for, uh, for a discussion. Does anybody have anything they'd like to um, state on this item? So I do, I know we're gonna be discussing the chamber items uh, a little farther along, but uh, there has been a great deal of discussion regarding the 2021 Canada Day activities, which the Chamber of Commerce uh, um, hosts for, for the city and have done so very, very well. Um, so, but there has been uh, some other communities who have looked at um, uh, eliminating their Canada Day uh, activities this year. And, uh, and I, so I think it's important for us to state ours. Um, I can state that unequivocally, I do not support canceling Canada Day. Uh, Canada is a complicated country with a long and vast history. Yes, we have much to be proud of, and we also have some of our past to be not so proud of. But for all of the warts and problems, Canada is the best country in the world, and I am proud to be a Canadian. We need to take a balanced, reasonable approach in celebrating our accomplishments while also recognizing our mistakes. This year's Canada Day is going to be more like the COVID-19 Canada Day of last year in that there will not be any public celebrations. Next year, when it is safe, we will have an amazing Canada Day with a great community celebration. This year, we will again have a non-public recognition of our first responders and will celebrate the heroes who have stepped up to help all of our residents and citizens. And again this year, Belleville residents and Canadians will be free to celebrate Canada in their own way. Everyone should have a balanced view to commemorate both the good and the bad. Canada is not finished and our history is not final. It continues to change and develop and improve. The factors that have led us to be the best country in the world are not guaranteed. We must continue to work hard to make sure they exist, not just for us, but for future generations as well. One of the problems with the cancel culture movement we are seeing is that you cannot change history, but you can learn from it if you choose to do so. Improvements occur when you learn from your mistakes. While I'm not trying to say that our past does not, uh, what I'm trying to say is that our past does not define us moving forward and how we celebrate our nation's birthday is up to each and every one of us. I can assure everyone that we will not be canceling Canada Day. We will work with the Belleville Chamber of Commerce and our inclusion committee to recommend the appropriate steps we can take to recognize all of Canada's past, present and future. We can be sensitive while also being proud to be Canadian. Um, Councillor Feeney, go ahead, ma'am. I am with you on this one. And you know, now more than ever, we need to have um, events that are positive and uh, express hope. We have just gone through a whole awful time with the pandemic and we're getting through there. But the thing is, yes, we are a country that has warts, but we are a community that is wonderful and appreciates each other. And Canada Day means something to everybody and it means something different to everyone. But we need to be, believe in the positive and hope. That's all I'm saying. Great, uh, Councillor Kelly. Uh, thank you uh, for you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as chair of the city's equity, diversity, inclusion committee, um, We've seen um, how the country is reacting since we all found out about the 215 children in BC. And I think uh, all Canadians were really rocked by this. Uh, it was an emotion, it's so emotional. Um, 
Now, when you do a look at residential schools, and this is where the Canada Day conversation is leading to, 150,000 children taken from their homes. Think of that, 100,000, 150,000. 100% suffered you know, severe physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. And the reality of those tragedies is coming more into focus every day. 139 residential schools in Canada. The last one, not that long ago, 1996, when it closed. Um, this past weekend, when we received the information from the Chamber of Commerce about ideas for Canada Day, I reached out to my Indigenous friends and had that conversation. And that conversation has to happen a lot more now than ever before. According to the uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission report, uh, 6,000 kids died while in residential schools. And I had a conversation with a gentleman that was in a residential school from Tandanega. And the conversation ended because he was too emotional. He couldn't, he couldn't keep it going. And that's their reality. And that's our reality. Um, I spoke to the mayor today and we discussed how could Belleville as a community uh, make positive steps forward. And uh, with the rollout for Canada Day on the 1st, I and the mayor came to a, you know, uh, an agreement that the city needs to bring in partners to have that conversation. So as the chair of the Equity, Diversity, Inclusion Committee, we're going to uh, call a special meeting this week Hopefully, uh, with the Chamber of Commerce, I've reached out to Jill Raycroft and uh, very understanding and wants that conversation to happen. June is National Indigenous History Month as well, and we're having this conversation. Um, we can't forget seven generations. I spoke to uh, one of the folks I spoke to over the weekend, seven generations affected by residential schools, and they're close by in Tyananega. Mohawks, Quinney, they're, they're in our community. They're, they're on our sports teams. Their families have been affected by residential schools. And murdered and missing women in this country, it seems like we've lost our way at all levels of government. And I think uh, locally we can make a difference. We have to celebrate all voices and faces in this country. Uh, so next possession or the next opportunity uh, for us to have a conversation uh, on the uh, Equity, Diversity, Inclusion Committee. We're going to get together, have that conversation, uh, talk about what Belleville can do to recognize in a respectful manner. And uh, Summer Bertrand, who's the lead at the Hastings Prince Edward District School Board, she's on our committee. She's the Indigenous lead there. She's going to be part of that conversation. David R. Miracle, his wife Kim from Tandanega. Carrie Dewey Smith, she's the superintendent with the Algonquin Lakeshore Catholic School Board. She's the Indigenous leader with the board. Jill Raycroft with the chamber and the uh, committee. So we've got a lot of work towards understanding reconciliation. And this is serious stuff. And I don't want it to be tokenized by having a flag or wearing orange where we really don't understand. And I think in the fall and in the winter months and next spring, when we're serious and moving forward, we have uh, workshops with our neighbors uh, at one of the city facilities because uh, this means a lot to me and I know for everybody. And the conversation has to continue and, and the city of Belleville can really take the lead on this. So that's what I just wanted to share. And thank you, Mayor, earlier today for supporting getting together uh, with our friends and people in the educational field, because it is at the end of the day, education. Thank you. And, and Councillor Kelly, I hope you won't mind if I uh, share part of our conversation was also that we wanted to do something that was sincere. You used the word, it wasn't tokenism. I also don't want it to be patronizing. Um, you know, it, it needs to be meaningful. It needs to be sincere. It needs to be appropriate. And, uh, and I think that um, the work of your committee um, is, the, is a very important place to go. Um, you know, again, we can recognize all of our history, 
not just uh, the good. Um, we can recognize that uh, there are things that we continue to improve and, uh, and thank you for bringing that up. Councillor Thompson, I've got you next in the queue for uh, speaking. Yeah, I just, I'm gonna keep it short. Uh, I thought we were gonna discuss it further on down, but I'm gonna make my comments. When I got the note from the Chamber of Commerce, my wholeheartedly is that we celebrate Canada Day. We have lots to celebrate. Have we done wrong in the past? Yes, we have. And hopefully we won't do wrong in the future, but there's always that possibility. But Canada is a vast land and it's, and I'm proud to be on the committee with uh, Councillor um, Sean Kelly. And it's great to hear that that's coming to the committee for discussion, but we need to respect what's happened in the past by canceling the candidacy would not be right for the rest of, for even for the indigenous people to, to eliminate Canada Day. They're part of Canada and we need to make sure that we keep celebrating Canada because if you look at the Americans, the Americans is a big thing down there for, your, for their special day. Canada still has to be celebrated and all indigenous and all other people that's been immigrated into Canada. If you look back, we're all immigrants. Let's celebrate Canada. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Councillor Millette. Thank you, Your Worship. And uh, I, I too today spoke with uh, uh, Councillor Kelly on this issue and I've, uh, I've thought long and hard of it. And I, I spoke uh, with my colleague on the, uh, on the Equity, Diversity and Inclusion Committee uh, Ms. Bertrand, just shortly before the meeting today, and I can tell you that um, um, I, I wanted—I I didn't want the decision to be made at, at this meeting uh, today uh, without that consultation piece in place. I wholeheartedly support it. It's not our, it, in all fairness, in light of what's been happening lately, and and the latest is just the the discovery of the uh, the unmarked graves. Um, to simply uh, have, as Councillor Kelly said, uh, uh, you know, uh, an un, an unrepresentative uh, uh, gesture is not productive in any way, shape, or form. I just want to make one point, though. I don't think anywhere in the discussion, and, and I know that the the unfortunate phrases like virtue signaling and cancel culture you know, or the darling of a certain subset of people that like to use those phrases. I don't think anybody was suggesting canceling Canada Day. Um, you know, we're not holding the weenie roasts and the big gatherings at uh, Zwix, but nobody's suggesting that anybody not take this holiday or this uh, remembrance of our heritage and our country, you know, into our hearts and celebrate it however we were going to do. No, I think what the, the point is, is that we, we're trying to make some meaningful recognition of this, you know, very dark, let's not just say, you know, it's unfortunate, it's bad news. Uh, yeah, you know, bad things happened in the past. This, this, this is serious business and we really need to get it right. That's why I look forward to that dialogue and uh, I, hope, uh, I hope we can have a good meaningful dialogue and some good, uh, some good uh, results out of it. So thanks for the... Uh, for making that happen, Your Worship and Councillor Kelly, but uh, I, I really don't want this to become some kind of a, a political football where everybody is talking about canceling Canada Day. That was never on the table in my book, so thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on this item? Councillor Sanderson. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, like Councillor Thompson, I was going to save my comments for a little later when it came up, but uh, might as well jump in now. I really appreciate uh, uh, your strong endorsement for Canada Day, and I also uh, very pleased and encouraged uh, with Councillor Kelly's actions to try and put some meaningful uh, uh, actions around uh, what we all know is just a, a travesty. Uh, I, I wanted to share when I when I first read the uh, the document from uh, Chamber. Now, I, I thought about my own personal situation. My family immigrated to Canada from Scotland in 1965. And it was, I think it was two years later, right, uh, when then uh, uh, the Prime Minister, uh, gosh, Lester Pearson, I forgot his name, uh, came out with the Canadian flag. And uh, Canada in 1965, 
and even more so today, was, was a cultural mosaic. So we have people from, I, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if we have people from every corner of the world that reside in Canada. Uh, so it, it, it's truly one of the best, if not the best country in the world. Uh, specifically with Canada Day, I, I think that uh, it should be celebrated. And, and certainly uh, when it comes to the issue and ongoing issues uh, with, with and for our Indigenous people, it, it's sort of heartbreaking. I can, I can, remember, uh, I can remember in high school, uh, then Prime Minister uh, Pierre Trudeau and his, uh, his Minister of Indian and Northern Affairs, Jean Chrétien, uh, issued a white paper. And in that white paper, they, uh, they, they put forward to abolish the Indian Act and, and uh, coerce, for lack of a better word, indigenous people to assimilate with uh, ordinary Canadians in their words. And uh, so, you know, for the past 50, that was 50 years ago. In the past 50 years, successive federal governments have failed to come to grips and failed to address uh, the ongoing issues. And it's, it's sort of disheartening and, uh, and discouraging. And uh, just to see it come to the grassroots, which is municipal councils across the province and across the country, and it's municipal uh, councils that have to pick up the torch and run with it. Well, that, that, uh, that I think is another slam on our federal governments. And uh, it's uh, both political parties, not just one. So long story, but uh, I just wanted to get that out. I, uh, I fully uh, respect uh, Canada Day and what it, what it means for me personally and my family and all the opportunities we've been afforded. And I think we all need to celebrate it in our own way. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sanderson. Councillor Carr. Uh, yes, thank you. I saw a quote uh, online. It uh, reads, life must be understood backward, but it must be lived forward. And I think sometimes we, it's best to understand our past to make for a better tomorrow. And I know um, in my other job, I, I work with Indigenous elders. I, through working with... Uh, I've seen intergenerational understand it. Uh, I've sat through some teachings, smudge, um, and, and certainly change of season ceremonies to understand. And I appreciate what uh, Councillor Kelly uh, is uh, referring to in terms of engaging and consulting with the Indigenous community. We need to take the lead from them. Thing that is meaningful, we need to listen and we need to learn, we need to understand. And then we need to cooperatively look to a better future. And uh, as more coming out in the public, uh, the public, how bad it really is or was and how it continues through generations. And so uh, this, is, this is good in the sense that this is part of a healing process. And uh, I know when we talk with uh, our Indigenous elders, we talk about the inmates and their healing journey. And as a community, they have a healing journey that they have to go through. But we need to do it with them and take their lead. And so to do it right, we really need to, to listen and learn and, and listen to their teachings on, on this front. And as far as, you know, and, and I have these are doing regarding Canada Day and almost taking it as a protest to cancel. Uh, a protest is is learning, understanding, and then implementing policies and initiatives that grow a community together. And that's one thing where we really need to focus. And so I certainly support Canada Day. I, I echo some of the comments of uh, my colleagues. You know, when I look at Canada and, and the celebration, I look at it more as the celebrating our diversity. And a lot of times under normal circumstances, part of a Canada Day celebration is citizenship ceremonies where we have individuals coming from all over the world, as Councillor Sanderson points out, to take up citizenship in this country. 
And they're attracted here because of the hope for the future. And they want to be part of it. They want to be contributors to it. And uh, it has been referred uh, as a mosaic. And, and that's how Canada has been described. And when you look at the conflict and the, the geopolitical conflict that goes on around the world and, and even in Israel lately seeing bombs being lobbed back and forth, to be able to sit here and have this dialogue today to look at mediation demonstrates the fact that we do live in a great, uh, great country where we can have these conversations, where we can heal together and where we can grow and we're conflict with each other at all times. So I, I think we have a lot to celebrate in terms of the optimism for the future. And that's what we really need to focus on. And I don't think that um, a simple make is the right gesture to really, to really wired. And so uh, with that, uh, you know, we look forward to celebrating Canada Day as best we can under pandemic conditions and certainly look forward uh, to the opportunity where we can gather together as a collective community and celebrate uh, the country that we have today and the country that we all hope for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Carr. Um, I didn't want to interrupt when you were speaking, but you were cutting in and out. So you may want to, in the future, just take your uh, camera off so that we can uh, maintain your audio uh, quality, but, um, uh, but thank you for your comments. Uh, Councillor Alsop. Thank you, Chair, and I do want to say that I appreciate uh, my, my colleagues' comments on this. I think that uh, certainly we need to be creating platforms for Native people to speak for themselves and not making decisions uh, at their behest. Um, you know, the, the process of you know, going and working with Native leaders and, and talking to them about you know, best practices and actions moving forward uh, should always be the case. And one of the things that I do want to address is, is some concern over this idea that uh, these wrongs are all historical that we have a, a history with some problems, but we're a great place now. And Canada is the greatest country in the world um, by, by no small measure. However, you know, the last school did close in 1996 when I was four years old. Uh, if I was a young native child, I might be getting ready to go to that school at the time it was closed. We still have issues with incarceration rates being different between uh, white people and native people. We still have issues uh, in the country with the largest uh, freshwater reserves in the world where we can't get fresh water to uh, people on reservations. And certainly as uh, Councillor Kelly uh, mentioned, the whole issue of where are our girls and our missing women, we still have a problem where you know, I, I'm a father of three daughters. Uh, it breaks my heart to know that people wouldn't look for their daughters in the same way they would look for mine if they were to go missing. So we do have a lot to atone for in the present. And I think that is where this notion comes from of, of canceling candidate. But I think the, the reality is that we need to do more on these issues and that by just canceling the celebration of, of Canada for what it is now uh, isn't going to get those issues addressed. And I think uh, if we do it without proper um, input from the Native community, and sometimes the Native community is, is sort of referenced as our neighbours in Tandanaga, uh, but we need to realize that 7.4% of people living in Belleville are of Native origin. Um, that's the largest group other than Caucasians and is larger than every other group combined. Um, so there is a, a huge Native presence in our community and we need to be mindful of them as well. Um, so I think it's important that we do have their consultation because to cancel the event uh, without their input uh, might be something that actually backfires and, and draws more ire towards that group uh, as though that this is something they've asked us for when, when that isn't the case. So I, I do appreciate the efforts to, uh, to work with Native elders uh, to go through the inclusion committee to have a look at what best practices are. And I hope to bring forward uh, something in new business today uh, as a good faith effort to perhaps inject more native culture, uh, more native artwork into our downtown core so that on a daily basis, we're reminded of the fact that this was not our land, uh, that this city had a name before we gave it one. Um, and and to, to further the goals of, of inclusion, uh, of celebrating diversity, uh, and giving uh, Native people a platform to speak for themselves. Thank you, Councillor. Um, anyone else like to add to it? Well, thank you, my colleagues. I, I really think that, uh, you know, here we represented the best of Belleville um, dealing with uh, difficult issues. And, uh, um, you know, I, I uh, certainly know that we're putting a big uh, responsibility on, um, on 
our new committee that used to be called the inclusion committee. Now it's, uh, it's expanded to include uh, to different concepts. And, and I know that they are up to the job as they go forward. And we're looking forward to seeing some real meaningful um, recommendations. And when I say meaningful, I mean, uh, I su I'm suggesting that they are appropriate and that there is a level of the input that's necessary. All of us have spoken about the need to get input. And so, um, you know, I just want to thank you. Um, as I said, this is the best representation of Belleville that we can possibly put forward. And I, uh, I truly appreciate it. Um, the resolution is on the floor that uh, the item be received and referred to consent items, 8B6. Um, all in favor? It's carried. Item 7.4 is the uh, Alexicon Energy Community Report for quarter one of 2021. And the resolution is that the Alexicon Energy Community Report Q1 2021 be received. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Uh, Councillor Feeney and Councillor Sanderson, any uh, questions or discussion? All in favor? It's carried, thank you. Uh, moving on to item eight, uh, Committee of the Whole. And I'm looking for a motion to go into Committee of the Whole to hear and consider reports passing of recommendations and resolutions with myself in the chair. Moved by Councillor Feeney, seconded by Councillor Alsop. Uh, all in favor, it's carried, thank you. Uh, so we'll move now to 8A, reports, where the agenda shall include under reports items that warrant individual attention from council. And we will start with item 8A1, and it is the contract ENG 2021-02, it is the Herkimer Avenue reconstruction, Dundas Street East Water Main reconstruction. Uh, project manager's report number ENG 2021-15. And the resolution is that the cap that capital budget issue 2021-1.005 Dundas Street East Waterman Water Main replacement be reduced by $350,000. And that capital budget issue number 2021-1.001 Herkimer Avenue reconstruction be increased by $350,000 and be transferred from 2021 issue 1.005 to 2021 issue number 1.001. And that the tender submission from Gordon Bar Limited be accepted for contract number ENG 2021-02, Herkimer Avenue reconstruction and Dundas Street East Water Main reconstruction in the amount of $6,801,554.52 plus $884,202.09 HST for a total dollar amount of $7,685,000. $756.61, this being the lowest cost tender received, and that the mayor and city clerk be authorized to sign the acceptance agreement on behalf of the Corporation of the City of Belleville, and that the city clerk be authorized to affix the corporate seal. Uh, may I have a mover and a seconder? Councillor Sanis and Councillor Thompson. Any questions or a discussion on this item? Councillor Thompson. I just want to say uh, this is great to have this in front of us today. Finally. Yeah. Um, this has been a long time coming, uh, and not just because of Belleville, because of the railway, getting the, the, the OKs from the railway people to get the, their, their crossing guards there to do our work, and the Quinn Conservation for the, the, um, the, the waters, the, the source water, not the source water, but the, um, the pond. Uh, it's great to see. I think it's wonderful. The residents of Knott Street have put up with an awful lot for a long time because there's still uh, ditches along there and uh, it's in terrible shape. My question is, um, besides the compliment, it says here, it looks like most of the work is going to be done in 2021. Um, and then it says on the next page, um, Herkimer uh, completion, August 22. Can somebody tell me what's totally going to be done in 2021 and has and what's going to be left to be done in 2022 sure uh we will ask director ashton to uh i think you heard the question director yes. ashton you want to go ahead so dundas street will be is scheduled to be done in 2021 and uh herkimer um south of the cpr railway line will be done in 2021 and in 2022, Herkimer between the rail and Dundas, as well as the boring underneath the CPR will be scheduled to be done in 2022. Okay, thank you, Councillor Thompson. You're on, okay. Any, sorry, um, 
any particular reason why we're doing it that way rather than doing the worst section first? So uh, the decision was made to do south of CPR railway to take advantage of the low water levels this year. Okay. So that wouldn't be an interference. Uh, they also, because of the, um, the way the contract is structured, the uh, contractor or subcontractor of bar will be required to make arrangements with uh, CPR for permission and flagging, et cetera. So that is why sort of to allow them time to arrange for that to happen. And, and that's the reason why that part of the road will be done in 2022. Okay, and um, when we do the intersection of Dundas and Herkimer, um, I caution with the accessibility issues. Uh, everything will be um, considered on the AOD regulations with the crossing and that for people because of the four lanes. Uh, that's always an issue there. And I would ask that we pay special attention because right now, um, when the lights change, a lot of people don't get across in time when the lights turn back again. So um, I'm trusting that the AODA regulations and the timing will be all looked after. Uh, and that will be this year or next year? The uh, lights are scheduled to be installed at intersection this year. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and Councillor Thompson, I'll just state that um, these timelines, as you know from, uh, from our time, is really dependent upon CP. I have a meeting with them tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock to uh, not in, just ensure that the schedule uh, go, but if there's any way that we can expedite it. Um, you know, we're very, I think we're very confident in Gordon Barr uh, as the contractor. They've done excellent work for us on Bell Boulevard and yeah. on um, on Sydney Street, and they're going to do great work here. The issue has never been about um, the work. It's always been about interacting with CP Rail. Yes. And so for the first time in in a long time, we're having a quote unquote summit tomorrow to discuss a number of issues in that, and, and their flag people, the people that they require us to hire to be able to allow this project to go ahead is on the top of my list. Good, thank you very much. That, I think that dialogue will be great to make this project go smoothly and get it done as quickly as possible. Yeah. Thank you. How long has it been on your radar, Councillor Thompson? I think it's probably back about 12, 14 years yeah. that this so thing has been yeah. talked about um, for a number of reasons. Um, so it's great to see it done. So thank you very much. Good. Uh, anyone else have any questions or comments on this item? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. And Godspeed with that project. Um, 8A2, uh, Community Improvement Plan Implementation, the Financial Analysis. It is the manager of Policy Planning's report number PP. 2021-32, and the resolution is that pursuant to the manager, policy planning's report number PP 2021-32, the recommendations of the addendum to the April 2020 financial analysis memo prepared by Dillon Consulting Limited be approved, and that all community improvement plan programs except the building permit and development charge rebate programs, one, two, seven, 15, and 16, shall be initiated in year one of the community improvement plan. Can I have a move by Councillor McCaw, seconded by Councillor Sanderson. Any questions or discussion on this? Councillor Carr. Uh, yes, thank you. And uh, this is a good comprehensive report. Um, you know, this is a community improvement plan. Uh, the total cost uh, is $13 million, which is uh, very significant and works out to be about $24,000 per unit. You know, it's unfortunate that um, we have to do this. Um, and it's kind of like uh, plugging a hole in the front of the boat while the back of your boat's missing. And, uh, you know, when I look at uh, our real estate numbers here, in uh, May of 2020, the average sale price was $398,000 in Belleville. This year, it's $539,000 is the average. That's just Belleville. The Quinney region itself is, is much larger. And uh, there's already projections, according to RBC, that uh, housing costs are going to continue to escalate in 2021. And certainly uh, our inflation is, uh, is an issue. And you don't see the Bank of Canada coming in to tap the brakes anytime soon. And so 
as much as this is going to put a small uh, plug in a leaky boat, uh, the back end really is missing off this boat. And, you know, I, I'm going to support it, but it's unfortunate that we as a municipality and other municipalities are put in this position where we have to fund this to at least create some stimulus for um, apartments and for some affordability uh, when at the other end policies at the other levels of government aren't coming in to actually deal with the structural issues that are that are inherently wrong with our, our current real estate. Um, we're going to continue to see the uh, ability of people to find housing get further and further uh, beyond their reach. And when you look at our average wages, and I've touched on this before in our industrial park, um, you know, put someone making less than $20 an hour, it's unfathomable to think that they um, can make ends meet in terms of their housing costs. And theoretically, it's always been that housing should be 30% of your income. And, uh, and by the time we're taxed and all the rest of it, uh, it's a struggle. And uh, so hopefully this does help by adding uh, 544 new units and, and certainly uh, stimulates this uh, uh, growth. Um, but I'm, I'm still very concerned about what we're doing locally and then what's not happening at other levels to, to really stop the bleeding that's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on this item? Councillor Thompson. Just a, just a quick question. Um, the DC and the uh, development charges and the um, BP, they will not start in year one. What year will they start? Have we established what year they will uh, start into this program? Well, Councillor Thompson, development charges are currently under review by yes. uh, City Council. And so... Um, depending on where in the city you are. So for example, in the downtown area, yep. you already have a reduction in 50% yes, in your development charges. So okay. that will continue, but I'm uh, expecting that um, manager uh, McAdam will bring us that information when we finalize our development charge bylaw, which we expect to do by the end of this year. So probably within the next year or two, we may be including those in this program then. No, I think it'll be sooner than that. I think as soon as we finalize our development charge bylaw, um, as you just for people that are watching, um, we had a significant uh, proposed increase based on the cost the city yes. is seeing yes. increase. And, um, and we've been having discussions with the Quinney Home Builders in terms of how we will see that increase. And we also had to get some, some more uh, a report that was gonna be completed dealing with some of those estimated future costs. Um, when that information is all compiled and we've had consultations with the Quinney Home Builders, uh, the final bylaw will come back and it'll be a five-year bylaw. And as soon as that information is approved by council, then we can implement that in the, um, the, the our intended um, development charge relief for rental accommodations at that point. Okay, and I'll just end by saying, uh, I commend the city of Belleville for taking this on. I know it's other levels of government uh, are a major part of this, but in my years as, as a counselor and with the social services committee, you know, we've always been asked, what does the city do? Well, I'll tell you, the city has stepped up on this one and put their for, for, foot forward and, and open it up that we are doing something uh, for the citizens and our housing situation, our rental stock. And so it may be wrong that we're not getting the other outside help uh, totally that we're looking for, but this one shows Belleville that we're mean what we talk about. We're in the market. We want to help. And I commend for this report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Councillor Sanderson. Thank you, Your Worship, and I certainly echo uh, Councillor Thompson's uh, comments. Uh, to me, this is a, a flagship program. It, it, uh, it had its sort of beginnings, if you will, uh, in our housing summit uh, in early 2019. Uh, staff have done a tremendous amount of work in terms of pulling this together. There's some 17 different programs that are sort of targeted. Uh, to help uh, the overall housing situation in our community. And uh, as, as is the case uh, in, in uh, many other areas, uh, sometimes the city has to be the leader. And uh, I think we've stepped up. 
uh, $13 million uh, over a 10-year span to be able to create, hopefully, an environment that uh, is uh, attractive, not only to existing developers, but perhaps some new developers. Certainly there's uh, incentives there for secondary suites uh, in, in new home construction, construction as, as well as existing. So I, uh, I'm very proud of the program. I'm very proud of our uh, Destam Macadam who uh, basically piloted this thing and, and brought it to this point. And uh, I think we should uh, you know, take, a, take a moment to celebrate uh, this program. And uh, the net result, it's not just gonna be housing for the community, but there's, we're creating a tax base. We're creating an opportunity for people to move here uh, the benefits uh, far outweigh uh, any initial uh, financial uh, support that we're providing. So, so hats off to uh, to Dustin McAdam and the entire team. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on this item? Okay. Well, just before I call the vote, I just um, you know this is um, you know a continuation of the progress that we've been making. You know, I recall in the election of uh, 2018 when I started talking about the housing crisis that was um, on the horizon, already existing in some cases, but that was going to get worse over the next uh, little while. Um, I recall that there were some residents who uh, didn't agree with me. And uh, I remember the one gentleman who uh, called me to take my lawn sign down from his lawn uh, because he thought I was making too much of an issue over this that it really wasn't, uh, wasn't that important. And, um, you know, when we as a council uh, convened that housing summit in March of 2019, the first time that we brought together all the different players, and I think all of us were surprised at how extensive an issue it was, and for how long we had particularly stopped building rental accommodation in our, in our community. And, um, and as the recommendations came out from that summit, and then our staff led by uh, now director Stephen Ashton had to go through all the, uh, the, the hoops and the hurdles that are required under the Municipal Act for us to make changes to our policy, to be able to not just uh, focus on, um, on this rental uh, accommodation sector, but also to provide financial assistance, financial relief incentives to, uh, to builders and developers to do this. And it was a long process. And, uh, and we finally have come uh, to this point. You know, we, we brought in the policy uh, last year, we consolidated all of the community improvement plans to allow us to legally provide these incentives. Um, this is the second shoe dropping kind of, if you, wanna, if you wanna discuss it, where this is now where the rubber meets the road. Uh, this is where we talk about what the amount is. Um, the city of Belleville will be contributing more than $13 million in financial incentives to build additional rental accommodation in our city. Um, this will result in at least 544 additional specific units on top of what we've approved to this point. Um, we will do more if uh, the intake on this is so good that we are moving forward. Um, our council or a future council will actually do put more resources available to allow this to go forward because we know it is so important. You know, there were a lot of reasons not to do anything and there are a lot of communities in Ontario that are suffering the same type of stress in their housing market as we are in Belleville and, and they are not taking these steps. We have been leaders on this. Yes, we shouldn't be doing this. This is $13.1 million that um, Really, we should be spending in other areas of our operations, fixing our roads, fixing our sidewalks, providing more recreation for people. This is a area of provincial and federal jurisdiction, but they're not doing it. And so we have to, um, you know, there's a lot in our budget that really, when municipalities were first uh, thought of, these are not our traditional areas of responsibility, but we do them because it's for the benefit of our residents. Will this fix all of our problems? No, uh, it's a really, really good start. And, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm happy that, uh, that we have, and I look forward to this program rolling out. And I too wanna say thanks to um, Director Ashton and Manager McAdam and all of their staff who have worked so hard in pulling all this together. Uh, it's a proud day for, for all of us. And, um, and we, uh, we hope that this program will be oversubscribed 
so much so that we will have to increase the amount of resources we put into it. Um, the question is on the floor, the motion's on the floor. I'll call the question, all in favor? It's carried, thank you everybody. Item 8A3, sidewalk repair and re, uh, replacement and repairs. Uh, General Manager of Transportation and Operations Services, report number GMTOS 2021-13. The resolution is that the tender submission from 809592 Ontario Inc. Um, operating as Parkside Landscaping and Contracting be accepted for contract number ENG 2021-12. Sidewalk repair and replacement in the amount of $127,340 plus $16,554.20 HST for a total of $143,894.20. This being the most qualified tender received and that the mayor and city clerk be authorized to sign the acceptance agreement on behalf of the corporation of the city of Belleville and that the city clerk be authorized to affix the corporate seal. Mover in a seconder, please. Councillor Kelly and Councillor Millett, any questions on this? All in favor? It's carried, thank you. 8A4, Moira River Wall Repairs. The General Manager, Transportation and Operation Services, report number GMTOS 2021-14. And the resolution is that the capital budget item 2021-1.020, Moira River Wall Repairs be increased by $20,000 to be funded by transferring $20,000 from the capital budget issue 1.043 Cascade Park Bridge Repairs and that the tender submission from 809592 Ontario Inc. operating as Parkside Landscaping and Contracting be accepted for contract number TOS 20-21 re Moira River Wall Repairs in the amount of $497,125 plus $64,626.25 HST for a total of $561,751.25, this being the lowest qualified tender received and that the mayor and city clerk be authorized to sign the acceptance agreement on behalf of the corporation of the city of Belleville and that the city clerk be authorized to affix the corporate seal. <clears throat> Excuse me, may I have a mover and a seconder please? Councillor McCaw and Councillor Alsap, any questions or comments? Councillor Thompson. Just a quick question. Where is this particular um, section of the wall to be repaired? Mr. Uh, uh, General Manager Reed, do you want to uh, answer that question, please? Yes, um, through the chair. It is uh, uh, directly across from City Hall. Uh, it's from Dundas Street northward to Coleman Street, uh, just by Marsh, uh, Marsh Insurance on the west side of the river. Thank you. Okay, anyone else questions? Okay, um, and I know you mentioned this, uh, Mr. Reed, but again, just to re refresh everybody's uh, or for information, the public, when is this project expected to start and be completed? Uh, we're hoping in uh, mid uh, mid to late July to start and uh, and finish up in sometime before before September. Okay, great. All right, all in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Eight A five, Marianne Sills Park Pole Relocation uh, on Field Number Two. It is a general manager, transportation and operation services report number GMTOS 2021-12. The resolution is that in accordance with section 30.3, sole and single sourcing, approval and reporting of the city's purchasing bylaw number 2020-09, the quotation from Century Electric Inc. be accepted for the Marianne Sills Park pole relocation in the amount of $58,650 plus $7,624.50 HSD, for a total of $66,274.50, and that the mayor and city clerk be authorized to sign the acceptance agreement on behalf of the corporation of the city of Belleville, and that the city clerk be authorized to affix the corporate seal. Moved by Councillor uh, Carr, seconded by Councillor uh, Feeney. Any questions or comments on this? Councillor uh, Thompson. The, the reason these, these pools are being moved and for, uh, are they uh, deteriorated? Are they relocating be for a particular reason? I've read the report. I'm not sure it says in there, but uh, why are we moving these poles? General Manager Reed. 
Okay. Uh, through the chair to Councillor Thompson, uh, the pole must be relocated uh, for us in prepare. We're preparing an area where we can put some concrete pad for bleachers in the future. Uh, is it was a part of the capital budget process to do some improvements at Marianne Sills Park. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else on this? So it's a lot more than just the pole relocation. And I know that some people might suggest that there is uh, not just uh, prep work at the new site and fixing the old site, but there's also electrical uh, that has to be uh, run through this. So that is the reason for the cost. Um, I'll call the question. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. 8A6, contract number uh, PRKS 2021-10 regarding design build new playground equipment in Stanley Parkett. The Park Supervisor, Transportation and Operations Services, Report Number SPTOS 2021-01. And the resolution is that the request for proposal submission from SF Scott Manufacturer Limited, uh, also known as Blue IMP, be accepted for contract number Parks 2021-10 regarding design build for new playground equipment in the Stanley Parkette in the amount of $190,685 plus $24,789.05 HSD for a total of $215,474.05. This being the most qualified proposal received and that the mayor and city clerk be authorized to sign the acceptance agreement on behalf of the corporation of the city of Belleville and that the city clerk be authorized to affix the corporate seal. May I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Sanderson and Councillor Alsop. Um, so um, there, this is the beginning of uh, three projects which are uh, entirely funded by the federal and provincial governments. We are very grateful to them for this funding. And um, um, we're looking forward to updating this a very, very old playground equipment um, for the benefit of our citizens. Does anyone have any questions or comments they'd like to make on this item? Okay, I'll call the question all in favor. It's carried. 8A7, contract number parks 2021-09, regarding design build new playground equipment in Hague Park. Uh, parks Supervisor Transportation and Operation Services Report number SPTOS 2021-02. And the resolution is that the request for proposal submission from ABC Recreation be accepted for contract number parks 2021-09, regarding design build for new playground equipment in Hague Park in the amount of $191,191.20 plus $24,854.86 HSD for a total amount of $216,046.06, this being the most qualified proposal received and that the mayor and city clerk be authorized to sign the acceptance agreement on behalf of the corporation of the city of Belleville and that the city clerk be authorized to affix the corporate seal. May I have a mover and a seconder please? Councillor Alsop and Councillor Feeney. Uh, any questions or discussion on this? Thank you, I'll call the question, all in favor? It's carried. 8A8, contract number parks 2021-08, uh, regarding design build new playground equipment in Cascade Park. Park Supervisor Transportation and Operation Services, report number SPTOS-2021-03. The resolution is that the request for proposal submission from Open Space Solutions be accepted for contract number parks 2021-08 regarding design build for new playground equipment in Cascade Park in the amount of $172,566 plus $22,433.58 HST for a total amount of $194,999.58, this being the most qualified proposal received and that the mayor and city clerk be authorized to sign the acceptance agreement on behalf of the Corporation of the City of Belleville and that the city clerk be authorized to fix the corporate seal. May I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Alsap and Councillor Kelly, any questions or comments on this item? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Sorry about that. My mute button didn't go. Item 8A9, contract number parks 2021-12. Dr. Collip Courtyard and Reflection Garden. Park Supervisor, Transportation and Operations Services, Report Number SPTOS 2021-04. The resolution is that the 2021 Capital Budget Issue Number 1.060, Dr. Collip Courtyard and Reflection Garden be increased by 
$22,000 to reflect donations generated by the Dr. James Bertram Call-Up Memorial Committee and forward to the city to date and that the request for quotation submission from Madison Excavating and Landscaping Enterprises Inc. be accepted for contract number parks 2021-12 uh, regarding the Dr. Collip Courtyard and Reflection Garden in the amount of $129,000 plus $16,770 HST for a total amount of 144, I'm sorry, $145,770. This being the only qualified proposal received to, and that the mayor and city clerk be authorized to sign the acceptance agreement on behalf of the corporation of the city of Belleville and that the city clerk be authorized to affix the corporate seal. We have a mover and a seconder, please. I know Councillor Thompson wants to move this uh, with his affinity with this project to seconded by Councillor Alsap. Anyone have any questions or comments they wanna make? Councillor Th Thompson. Yeah, I'd just like to make one uh, comment. I think this is wonderful. I, I want to make sure that we make that, you know, uh, the Historical Society uh, made a, uh, put a plaque up at the library. And this is really just a, an enhancement and really a bigger tribute to Mr. Collip because without his uh, ingenious um, work in the past, we would still be in a very dire situation without the insulin. So uh, I just want to make sure that we, this is really an enhancement over the plaque that the Historical Society, and we don't want to uh, downgrade what the Historical Society has already done for Mr. Collip, but there is one at the library, and this is a nice tribute to Mr. Collip. Uh, it brings again the history that we have in our city of the people that's lived here, the important people. And again, I look forward to seeing it completed. Thank you. Right. Anyone else on this item? If I can just add on, Councillor Thompson, um, you know, you're absolutely right. You know, we've had a plaque for many years at the Belleville Public Library and, and uh, it's brought attention to the work that Dr. Collip did, um, you know, while Doctors Banting and Best uh, discovered insulin that they were able to harvest from, from pigs at that time. Um, it was not usable. And it wasn't until uh, Dr. Collup was able to refine it in a format that 100 years ago saved the first person's life who suffered from diabetes. And, um, and today uh, we have seen so much improvement. And Dr. Collup is from Belleville, uh, born here and spent much of his early life here. Um, and, uh, and went on to do great things, not just at the University of Alberta, my alma mater, but also at McGill University, and then finishing his career at the University of Western Ontario. Um, we have big plans for this memorial unveiling, and we've been working very closely with the call-up committee, but also with the Historical Society to truly do justice to this. And I do want to mention the extraordinary work of, um, of our staff member, Roland Cave Brown Cave who has been um, really diligent on this. You know, you saw photos of what the memorial itself would look like during the, um, our, our capital budget process. Um, but uh, we are now with the donations that the committee has received, we're able to enhance it, uh, including having a, a memorial um, garden along there uh, with medicinal themed plants. And that's all because uh, Mr. Kate Brown Cave uh, is taking the onus on him to to make it that's uh, you know more fitting. Um, we expect to have a good public um, re re presentation to unveil this in the in the fall, uh, including having Dr. Collip's family attend and uh, and others who will speak about his legacy, uh, which is much more than just insulin. So, uh, you know, there's lots to be proud of that we are accomplishing today at this council meeting. Um, but I think uh, in come October, uh, this is going to be something that we will feel may have been the most important thing at today's meeting and really will be a great legacy for us moving forward. So thank you to everybody that's been involved and continues to work very, very hard on this project. Um, the motion's on the floor. I'll call the question. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. 8A10, single source request, rural fire rescue boat and trailer. It is the Acting Fire Chief's report number FES 2021-07, and the resolution is that Council approve a budget increase of $12,000 for Capital Budget Issue 21-1.034, Rural Fire Rescue Boat and Trailer funded from the Capital Equipment Reserve, 
and that council approve a single source purchase of a fire rescue boat and trailer from Bay Marine in the amount of $54,500 plus $7,085 HST for a total amount of $61,585 and a net cost of 55, sorry, yes, and a net cost of $55,459.20. And the mayor and city clerk be authorized to sign the acceptance agreement on behalf of the corporation of the city of Belleville and that the city clerk be authorized to affix the corporate seal. We have a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Carr and Councillor Millette. Any questions on this? Councillor Millette. Thank you, Your Worship. And uh, I see uh, Deputy Patry's on line. Uh, I, I, we have the report in front of us from uh, uh, Acting Chief Corbett. Um, I just have a couple of questions then uh, regarding this uh, contract the, or the, uh, the agreement to purchase from Bay Marine. Um, we have two boat vendors in Belleville proper. Uh, were they approached at all for uh, a quote perhaps on this once we saw that uh, the outrageous price that uh, Outlaw Eagle Manufacturing had for uh, a boat? Uh, uh, Deputy Patrick. Yeah, through your worship to Councillor Millette, uh, it's my understanding, um, and again, I could be incorrect in this, that uh, yes, there were some other solicitations made. Uh, one of the things that we were challenged with was the availability of inventory um, and inventory within our price point. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, and I do understand that uh, uh, in COVID times, for whatever reason, everybody's gone goofy to buy a boat. So, uh, you know, it, they are hard to come by, that's for sure. Now, one other quick question, and I hope you can answer it now. I noticed that the previous two, and there's, uh, there's no doubt that they're advanced age. I mean, these were jet ski models that were... Uh, both 2001 models and you know i'm sure we got good service out of them over the last uh, uh 19 20 years but um i noticed that the replacement model is a 115 horse yamaha outboard and the other two would have been jet boats is that i'm just wondering from an operational standpoint these boats might be used uh on the Moira river in some cases or in shallower sections of uh, the Moira in close in shore. And um, a 115 horse outboard has got, um, you know, limitations as to operationally how it can uh, maneuver in shallow water. Is, uh, is there any, uh, I'm just wondering the other, as I said, the other two were jets and they can, they can, they can operate in a puddle. So again, um, to you, Councilor Millette, through the uh, the chair, um, the primary purpose for this boat is going to be for the bay. We we've experienced that the bay is way too too rough um, yeah. for the jet boats. Um, okay. The the thought is we'll we'll maintain one in service. We also use a John boat uh, along the river farther oh. up. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, but really, the principal factor for this is is for work in the bay. Okay, yes, I'm sorry. I, I forgot that we do have a John boat that we use in the shallower uh, bits on, on the river. Thanks very much, uh, Deputy Patrick. Yeah. Okay, anyone else on this item? I'll call the question. All in favor? It's carried. So that uh, deals with uh, Section 8A. So we'll now move to 8B, uh, consent items, where Council may adopt consent items by one motion. But prior to, such, uh, to consideration of such motion, uh, members may request that specific items be removed from consideration under such motion and council shall consider such items individually. And so I will go around the screen as it is on my screen, uh, starting with Councillor Kelly, anything you would like to have pulled? No, uh, Councillor Sanderson. Uh, yes, uh, your worship, <clears throat> 8B3, 8B4 and 8B6. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Feeney. No, thank you. All right, Councillor Carr. No, thank you. Councillor Thompson. No, thank you. Councillor Millette. I uh, did, uh, I'm sorry, Your Worship, did sure. Councillor Sanderson say 8B3? Yes, 
AP3 is pulled okay, already. I, okay, I, I want that pulled as well. Okay, uh, Councillor Alsop. Uh, no, nothing further. And Councillor um, McCaw. No, thank you. Okay, so the motion is that the following agenda items be approved with the exceptions of items 8B3, 8B4, and 8B6. May I have a mover and a seconder for that motion, please? Councillor Kelly, seconded by Councillor Alsop. Uh, all in favor, it's carried. So we'll start with item 8B3, which is the removal of a holding zone for block 17 of plan 21M-148, also known as Joy Court. And it is the policy planner's report number PP2021-27. The resolution is that a bylaw to authorize removal of the H holding symbol for concession for part of lot nine, block 17 of plan 21M-148, a former township of Thurlow, now city of Belleville, County of Hastings be prepared for council's consideration. Moved by Councillor Sanderson. We have a seconder, please. Uh, Councillor McCaw. Councillor Sanderson, you had asked this to be pulled, so uh, go ahead, sir. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. So, question uh, three yourself to Director Ashton. The uh, the parcel of land that's going to be unlocked. Uh, I'm presuming that's for residential development. Yes. Sir. Okay. Good. So. That, uh, that particular area of Joy Court, uh, if there's going to be residential growth in there, I've got to, a, a question and a comment, I guess. So the question is, have, have we given any thought to uh, extending Wiser Road uh, through across over to River Road as, a, as another point of access? Okay, on this, uh, so we didn't have those discussions on this. This was a purely a technical matter. There was just a hold because of the former treatment lagoon uh, beside it. So it okay. wasn't considered as part of the bigger picture. Okay. So what, what I'll do maybe is I'll take that offline with you as well as my other uh, comment or concern would be that the, uh, the access from Highway 37 uh, into Weiser Road. We've we've gone back to MTO on a, a couple of occasions over the past couple of years to see if we can um, do something about improving that intersection. And so uh, I'll I'll discuss that with you at that time as well. Thank you. Okay, thanks. You're suggesting because our traffic counts will increase there, correct, Councillor Sanderson? Exactly. Yeah, no, you're you're right. Anyone else on this item? Councillor Millette. Yes, Your Worship, and I, I'm that last point just covered my concern. Uh, I'm I'm happy to see this holding uh, uh, this holding uh, restriction removed from this piece of property. I know that the uh, the landowner has worked diligently to clear the approvals, and uh, you know nobody likes to see a uh, any kind of a uh, industrial lagoon anywhere near. But uh, I'm heartened to see that the uh, the ministry has uh, given it uh, a clean bill of health, but yes, uh, I, I am concerned that uh, any development in the future, um, those of us who were around uh, several years ago, and certainly I was in the uh, I was in the news business at the time when that horrific accident uh, took place at that intersection. Um, despite the efforts to make that uh, that particular interchange safer. With a, uh, a lane, it, it's still far from being an ideal intersection. I, I really hope we can make that. But yes, uh, when we see more residential development in that area, we're going to see a higher risk with more traffic in there. And boy, that just scares the willies out of me whenever I see it because I, uh, yeah, I, um, I, I, the reporter I sent to that, uh, that collision that day uh, was a long time getting over that scene. So let's hope. Let's hope we can um, we can get that uh, that uh, resolved. I, I'm with Councillor Sanderson on that, and anything we can, any pressure we can bring to bear, um, perhaps on the uh, on the transportation ministry, or somehow to make that uh, intersection safer. I'm all for it. Thank you. Great, thank you. Anyone else on this item? I'll call the question. All in favor? It's carried. Uh, we'll move to eight B four minor amendment to conditions of draft approval for the Riverstone subdivision, uh, part of lots eight and nine, registered plan number 124 and part of lot eight, concession three, formerly the township of Thurlow and now the city of Belleville. The owner is GCL Developments Limited 
and the files refer to ER 103, 34 to 105, and 12T-19003. Uh, it is the manager of approvals report number APS 2021-14. And this is a four part resolution that uh, starts with part one, that pursuant to section 51, uh, subsection 59 of the Planning Act, the Council of the Corporation of the City of Belleville withdraw final approval for Riverstone subdivision, phases one and two, files number ER-103, ER-105, um, and 12T-19003 for the lands identified as part of lots eight and nine, registered plan number 124 and part of lot eight, concession three, former township of Thurlow, now city of Belleville. And two, that pursuant uh, to section 5144 of the Planning Act, the council of the corporation of, city, of the city of Belleville approve a minor change to the conditions of draft plan of subdivision approval for Riverstone subdivision, file number 12T-19003, with the addition of condition 39 as shown on attachment number three to approvals, section report APS 2021-14. And that the Riverstone phase one plan of subdivision, file number ER-103 slash 12T-19003 for the lands identified as part of lots eight and nine, registered plan number 124 and part of lot eight, concession three, former township of Thurlow, now city of Belleville be granted final approval and that the manager of approvals be authorized to stamp and sign the final plans once the owners have satisfied all city requirements and the surveyors subdivision plans are satisfactory to approval staff. And finally, that Riverstone phase two plan of subdivision file number ER 105 slash 12T-19003 for the lands identified as part of lots eight and nine, registered plan number 124 and part of lot eight, concession three, former township of Thurlow, now city of Belleville be granted final approval and that the manager of approvals be authorized to stamp and sign the final plans once the owners have satisfied all city requirements and the surveyor subdivision plans are satisfactory to approval staff. Uh, Councillor Sanderson is moving. May I have a seconder, please? Councillor Thompson. Councillor Sanderson, you had asked this item to be pulled, so uh, go ahead, sir. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship, and my apologies for having to have you read that lengthy uh, uh, piece. Uh, the uh, I realize this is just uh, basically a, a language update to the proposal, but uh, when I looked at the plan, specifically page 47, 8B, uh, page 47, and looked at the layout of the Riverstone uh, uh, project, uh, we were at, uh, at our uh, Green Task Force meeting. We, uh, we had a delegation, or sorry, a deputation last week by uh, a Mr. Peter uh, Coy who's basically uh, a self-appointed uh, roundabout champion for our city. And uh, so he sort of uh, pitched to us, you know, from a, a carbon footprint, uh, from an efficiency, from a safety point of view, that uh, he would like to see Belleville and uh, Belleville Council and Belleville Planning encourage the use of roundabouts uh, where practical. And so, I know this project is probably a little bit uh, too far down the road perhaps, but as I look at the plan, there's, there's two spots in there that look like they would be controlled by a four-way stop sign. So my, my question, I guess, is to uh, Director Ashton, is it, is it too late in the process to consider for those two spots a roundabout uh, rather than what is likely to be a four-way stop sign? The uh, applicant's already been given draft plan of approval, so yes. Um, although I would say that if council would like to consider roundabouts for future developments, uh, the, the uh, approvals department in conjunction with the policy department is preparing draft or sort of guidelines for subdivision design. So that might be a place to sort of consider it in the future. Uh, in okay. terms of for moving forward. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Director Ashton. Uh, Councillor Millett. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. And uh, further to uh, 
thanks to my colleague, Councillor Sanderson, for uh, bringing that along because, yeah, we, uh, I mean, it, 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 it is a uh, sensible solution to an awful lot of uh, uh, issues. And uh, I'm going to take uh, Director Ashton up on that suggestion to move something forward from Green Task Force on that, because I think it's an issue uh, through council, of course. Uh, I think it's an issue that has quite a bit of merit. Uh, Mr. Coy has quite a presentation. We've asked it to be forwarded on uh, uh, to uh, development services to uh, consider. And that uh, PowerPoint presentation should be coming along very shortly. I understand uh, in speaking to Mr. Coy that it has at one point or another uh, made it to our, uh, our uh, transportation committee, but for whatever reason, um, it didn't get much traction at that. So uh, perhaps we can consider that uh, um, we might get us, and, and you know, in future subdivision plans where, it, uh, where it's merited. I know what, I, I see it came up on some of the discussions for Sydney Street. Uh, it's probably a little late along in that process as well, but um, traffic circle, or sorry, and I was corrected on this the other day, roundabouts uh, <laughs> uh, is, a, is a plan that, uh, you know, it works all over the world. So I won't belabor the point, but thanks for Councillor Sanderson for uh, tweaking that one. Anyone else on this item? <laughs> Councillor Thompson, I wonder if you are able to, uh, to answer a question regarding uh, Mr. Coy's presentation to the Transportation Committee. I believe he made a presentation in 2019 about um, uh, having the city's policies updated to be more roundabout friendly. Um, is there a recommendation coming from the Transportation Committee anytime soon on that? We discussed it at the traffic meeting, and um, in it's it's coming forward more of in our, in our um, traffic calming um, methods uh, as one of the solutions in the traffic calming because uh, there's such a push for traffic calming, and as they know, stop signs are not a traffic calming method that's approved or really well looked at. So we're looking at the the roundabouts and other designs of the road for traffic calming. And, and this would be just one of them and it'll come forward more in our traffic calming report. Okay, and um, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but since you brought it up, when do you expect that traffic calming report to come forth to council? This fall. Wonderful, that's great, great news. So uh, thank you for the work everyone's doing. Um, anyone else on this item um, 8B3? Seeing none, I'll call the question, all in favor? It's carried, thank you. Moving on to 8B6, the Belleville Chamber of Commerce report regarding special events contract, Lions Club virtual concerts on the Bay, Canada Day celebrations, curbside culture, buskers uh, on the Bay, market in the park, Lions Live and drive-by Christmas. It is the Belleville Chamber of Commerce special events contract report uh, and it deals with uh, correspondence item number 7.1. The resolution is that the your, assistance... Your, your Worship, can we just go with as written? Sure. Um, let me just see because I know people following at home. So, so basically the resolution, if I can just really summarize, is that the items that we contract the Chamber of Commerce to host on behalf of the city, uh, which uh, as part of their special events contract, uh, we'll be dealing with um, Lions Club virtual concerts on the Bay, the Canada Day Appreciation Procession and Community Hero Ceremony, Curbside Culture Food Festival uh, on July 9th, 10th, and 11th. Buskers on the Bay a Summer and Fall Initiative. Um, Market in the Park, uh, which will be in September of uh, 2021. Lions Live on September 19th, 2021. Uh, the Drive-By Christmas on November 21st, 2021. And that um, they're requesting permission and uh, all uh, regular, all bylaws that need to be adjusted to enable that to occur including using um, some of the former fairgrounds property. So the motion is made by Councillor Sanderson as read, seconded by Councillor Feeney. Councillor Sanderson, you had brought it up. Do you want to uh, speak to it, please? Uh, yes, I, I actually had it uh, circled uh, prior to the beginning of uh, our council meeting, but uh, we covered off the discussion point earlier in the meeting and I didn't pick up on that. So I okay. apologize. Nope, no problem. Anybody else have anything they want to say about those other events? We did speak about 
uh, obviously Canada Day, uh, but there are a number of other activities that uh, the Chamber is doing for the city. And I would suggest that they are pivoting well, considering uh, the reality of COVID. Um, certainly our outdoor events will not be back to normal this year. Um, uh, and including their forecasting that uh, the Santa Claus parade again this year will not be back to the traditional one, um, but uh, we will continue to have activities as best we can. So with that, uh, the motion's on the floor. I'll call the question, all in favor, it's carried. And we thank our partners at the chamber for the work they do. So let's move to 8C, council information matters, where Worship. council may it, Worship. yes. Did we cover 8B5, the grant committee? Uh, it wasn't pulled, Councillor Thompson. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, you're right. No. Okay. I, uh, um, so we, we already approved it. Um, maybe what I would suggest, if there was a specific question, uh, I'll let you bring it up under new business, if you'd like. No, no, that's okay. No, no. Okay. So as I was saying, we're on 8C, Council Information Matters. Uh, council may adopt consent items by one motion, but prior to consideration of such motion, members re may request that specific items be removed from consideration under such motion and council shall consider such items individually. So I'm gonna go backwards from the way I did last time and I'll start with Councillor McCaw. Anything you'd like to remove? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Alsop. No, thank you. Uh, Councillor Millette. Uh, Councillor Feeney. No, thank you. Councillor Carr. No, thank you. Councillor Thompson. Eight. B three C. Okay. Uh, Councillor Sanderson. No, thank you. Uh, Councillor Kelly. No, thank you. Okay, so then uh, the following agenda items be received, save and accept for eight C three C. May I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Alsop and Councillor Millette. All in favor? It's carried. So we'll move to eight C three C. That is request student transportation services and provincial government review dead end road dead end road kids busing uh, changes to allow exceptions where necessary for student pickup within the 800 meter distance and install warning signs and or other solutions to establish a safe busing program. It is the May 25th, 2021 resolution from the municipality of Calvin. Councillor Thompson is moving. I need a seconder, please. Councillor Millette, uh, Councillor Thompson, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I would like to see us uh, as a council um, support this motion. I think it has some merit. I think the, uh, the it should be further looked at because we have, you know, I realize the bus is turning in sometimes private property and going down dead end roads, but we've also got children that may have to walk quite a distance uh, in the middle of the winter or even not in the middle of the winter, stand outside and by forcing them to do that, um, I think can cause some danger. And also some of those children may be coming up a private road uh, that has really um, can be very dangerous uh, for those children by themselves, especially if the parents are out working, they're not able to escort them to the bus. So I would like that part of the, the transportation services reviewed and I'd like to See us support that. All right, thank you. Anyone else for discussion on this item? Councillor Millette. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. And I'm happy to support Councillor Thompson's uh, support of this motion. I think anything we can do, and I, we've seen uh, Councillor Kelly bring the initiative for uh, uh, school bus cameras, and uh, this is just another uh, example of, of ways in which we can keep our, our children safe at or around uh, bus stops. So uh, I'm gonna support it and thanks Councillor Thompson for pulling it. Okay, anyone else? Councillor Kelly. Thank you uh, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just, thanks to uh, Councillor Thompson for pulling that uh, as well as Councillor Millette touched on uh, and Councillor Thompson, anything to do with uh, children's safety going to school and back is a good idea and it's a good conversation piece. So uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Thompson for that. You're welcome. Okay, anyone else? I'll call the question, all in favor? It's carried. Um, a motion to rise and report. Uh, I need a motion to rise and report. Councillor Alsop and Councillor Feeney, all in favor? It's carried. So we'll move now to item number nine, bylaws. And we will do first reading of bylaws. And if it's okay, I'll just read the numbers. 2021-116, uh, 117, 
118 and 119. Uh, can I please have a mover and a seconder on those? Councillor Kelly and Councillor Sanderson, all in favor, it's carried. Second reading of bylaws uh, number 2021-116, 117, 118, and 119. Mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Alsop and Councillor Sanderson, any discussion on any of those bylaws? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, it's carried. And third and final reading of bylaws number 2021-116, 117, 118, and 119. Moved by Councillor uh, Thompson, seconded by Councillor Alsop. Uh, any, I'm sorry, all in favor? It's carried, thank you. So we'll move to new business. And um, I would like to um, start off new business by just taking a moment to thanking our residents and our businesses for adhering to the regulations that were in place during the government of Ontario's most recent province-wide stay-at-home order. Due to all of your patience and cooperation and hard work, we have officially moved into step one of the province's reopening plan effective uh, last Friday, June the 11th. This step will be focused on resuming outdoor activities with smaller crowds where risk of transmission is lower and permitting limited retail with restrictions. The following changes will be made to city services. Uh, City Hall will continue to be open by appointment only during step one. Those who require in-person service to obtain marriage licenses or biz building permits uh, or other services are asked to call to book an appointment. Yard sales are permitted under the first step of the reopening plan. Residents are now able to purchase yard sale permits online uh, or in person. Transit service continues to operate as um, as our transit operators, who also are those frontline heroes, they have continued to do so since the beginning of this pandemic. Uh, we continue to operate those services with safety precautions in place. The Belleville Public Library continues to offer curbside pickup and drop off. And our library staff look forward to reopening their doors during step two of the reopening plan. Details will be announced as they are made available. The Quinty Sports and Wellness Center continues to be closed to the public. However, many programs are continuing via Zoom and exciting new outdoor programs will soon be underway. Uh, for example, Fitness in the Park programming is being planned for July and August. Schedules will be available online beginning June 17th. Summer activities in the park for children aged four to 12 will begin on July the 5th. Registration is now underway for these activities taking place in various local parks. The Kinsman Outdoor Pool reopened today. Uh, all swims will require pre-registration and will have limited capacity and appropriate safety restrictions will be in place. And after a year off uh, in 2020, we're excited to reopen uh, the, re the only public outdoor pool in the city. And registration is required for all recreational programming. Please visit the Quinney Sports and Wellness website or call for more information. We are also very excited to welcome the pop-ups on the bay at West Zwick's Park, which are permitted to open um, starting on June the 15th. The majority of businesses operating in the park this year will be open six days a week in June and beginning June the 29th, all 13 uh, businesses will be open from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday. The provincial vaccine, uh, the provincial vaccine booking system remains open and we are so pleased to report that the vaccination center located at the Quinney Sports and Wellness Center has been operating successfully since May 31st. The Hastings Prince Edward Public Health Unit has worked alongside city employees to create a safe and easily accessible space for residents to receive COVID-19 vaccinations. Um, I have seen it in action firsthand and it is a, a real um, efficient, well-run operation able to vaccinate up to 2,500 individuals per day, uh, which is the largest uh, vaccination center in the entire region. As a council, we remain collectively and singularly focused on uh, your safety and the health of our residents in all of our decisions. We thank everyone for their cooperation and support of our efforts and encourage you to get vaccinated as soon as you are able to. My colleagues, I have a couple of uh, new business motions before I open the floor. Um, the first was uh, one that I circulated late last week uh, regarding gypsy moss uh, infestation. And uh, the motion that I am asking to be moved and seconded uh, reads as follows. 
where are there are extensive areas across eastern Ontario, including Hastings County and within the city of Belleville, where there is evidence of a significant impact on the tree canopy attributed to the presence of an infestation of the gypsy moth, and whereas the defoliation of the canopy places a significant hardship on trees, which over several years can weaken the tree sufficiently to the point that it becomes vulnerable to other diseases or insects, leading to further decline or the tree dying. And whereas the issue associated with the gypsy moth is present in both public and private land holdings and crosses municipal jurisdictions, and whereas a patchwork approach to surveillance and mitigation treatment will not lead to a successful outcome to curb the gypsy moth infestation. Now, therefore, this Council of the Corporation of the City of Belleville resolves that the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry be requested to undertake a robust, robust surveillance program to identify those regions most affected and to measure the density of the gypsy moth population within Eastern Ontario and that the ministry advise affected municipalities of the results arising from the surveillance program and to recommend a framework for a coordinated approach to curb the gypsy moth population and that the ministry embark upon a treatment program partnership with willing municipalities as part of a broader strategy to deal with the gypsy moth infestation and that this resolution be forwarded to the Premier's office, the Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry, local MPPs, and the Association of Municipalities of Ontario. Um, moved by Councillor Sanderson, seconded by Councillor Feeney. Uh, discussion, uh, colleagues, anybody have anything they'd like to say on this? Okay, so I'll call the question. All in favor? It's carried. Um, the next uh, resolution I'd like to bring forward is one to remove the delegated approval authority. And the motion is that the delegation of authority to the chief administrative officer, uh, the CAO, or their designate for matters related to purchasing and planning approvals be rescinded. Uh, can I get a mover and a second? Or moved by Councillor Carr, seconded by Councillor Sanderson. Uh, any discussion on this motion? Of course, Councillors, uh, Last year, uh, when the pandemic first uh, came, we declared an emergency delegation of authority to our CEO um, on certain matters, and they've been reporting to us regularly each meeting when it's been exercised. Um, but as we are uh, expecting to be back in person for our next council meeting um, and able to resume our normal operations, uh, we're rescinding that resolution. I will call the question. All in favor? It's carried. And then the last um, new business item that I want to bring up is a motion to declare uh, some land surplus for the city's purposes. And it deals with um, Walbridge Loyalist Road, a vacant lot on Walbridge Loyalist Road. And the resolution is that council declare as surplus to the city's requirements, the property owned by the city of Belleville, fronting on Walbridge Loyalist Road and described legally as part of lot 31, Concession one, part one, plan 21R-19789, Township of Sydney, now in the city of Belleville, County of Hastings. Can I please have a mover and a seconder for that resolution? Councillor Sanderson and Councillor Thompson. And just for people's familiarity, this is the parcel of land that um, in 2019, uh, Belleville City Council uh, donated to uh, Trenval for a new Quisney Business Center. Um, as Trenville is not proceeding with that land, uh, they returned it to the city of Belleville and we are now declaring it purplus, uh, surplus, so we may dispose of it. Any a discussion on this item? I will call the question, all in favor? It's carried. Thank you everybody for your patience. I'll open it up now for new business from council. Councillor Millette. Thank you, your worship. Um, I. Uh... I'm going to ask. Uh, I'm going to ask if uh, that uh, a couple of questions or uh, requests be directed uh, to our clerk's office on the weekend. I know that uh, two or three meetings ago we uh, we approved um, some measures to help curb parking in the area of uh, Bay Drive and First, Second, Third, et cetera streets uh, um, near the hospital. Um, I received uh, one call, and then I received a couple more from neighbors after the <laughs> after the one had spoken to the neighbors. Clearly, um, the issue uh, of permits for residents is uh, 
seems to be working through the week. Um, it's uh, and I, I know that strict parking enforcement down in in the area we uh, lovingly call Tin Town uh, through the week is is seems to be working. The issue apparently is on weekends. Um, during weekends, when the uh, lots at the hospital unfortunately are largely empty, uh, because there's uh, very you know there isn't as much staff, there are no clinics on at the hospital. Um, the problem has not uh, exacerbated, has not uh, got lessened in the area of uh, Bay Drive, for instance. Uh, uh, the one uh, resident who called me, she said she counted 17 cars along Bay Drive at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning, uh, stretching almost to 4th Street now. So that this seems to be an ongoing problem on weekends. And uh, the permit, uh, the permit has not, uh, the permit program doesn't seem to be making a dent. My question, I guess, would be, is there any uh, chance that we can again appeal to the hospital perhaps to make it easier for people uh, to use these empty lots. It seems it seems a crime that we have basically empty uh, near empty lots at the hospital, yet the residents in the neighborhood of uh, Bay Drive, First, Second, and Third Street are paying, you know, paying the price with congestion in their neighborhoods, and it's frustrating to them. So uh, I'm just wondering if there's anything that uh, that we might do. And I see Councillor Thompson's might have some insight as well through uh, the traffic committee, but I, I'm bringing that up now. And if there's any chance we can perhaps make that appeal to Quinney Healthcare, um, let's please use those uh, those parking lots if we can on weekends. Sure, uh, Councillor Thompson, do you have anything you want to add on this? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to um, ask uh, our clerk, Deputy Clerk Christine, for an update. Uh, I know we've instituted the the um, the residents parking. But I don't think we're in full um, tilt of that. So to get a true picture of how that's going to act, uh, I'd like to get an update from Christine that maybe give you a little more insight of, of when that might be and whether that's going to resolve some. But Christine? Uh, thank you, Councillor Thompson. Through the chair, I can advise council that uh, starting last Monday, uh, or actually today, the permits are available for the residents uh, that require one. Uh, what I can point out as well is that those permits um, are really only going to make a difference through the weekdays. Uh, at the present time in that uh, area that the, the pilot project is being run, the parking, there are no restrictions. Um, I shouldn't say no restrictions. The one side of the street has uh, no restrictions uh, on weekends and evenings. So I'm not sure if that's where the issue is. Uh, the other side of the street um, on each of those uh, small streets, the residential area there, it's no parking anytime. So I'm not sure that the permits are going to address what was uh, conveyed by Councillor Millette. Councillor Millette. Yeah, my, uh, my point was not so much the permits. Uh, it's the, again, as you, as you pointed out, Ms. Stewart, that on weekends, um, you know, people are, for whatever reason, well, I know whatever reason, they don't want to pay the exorbitant fees in the parking lot. And if there's no restrictions on weekends, they're going to avail themselves of the street. I'm just wondering if there's any way possible that we can appeal to Quinty Healthcare to see if they might agree on weekends. And I know every bit of revenue for those lots is important to QHC, but, uh, you know, in the interests of, of that small community that's borne the brunt of the, uh, the parking, uh, perhaps seeing if we might open up or lessen the fees on weekends, get them off the streets and uh, get the traffic off the streets and into the uh, parking lots at the hospital, which again, sit largely empty, so. So Councillor Millet, on that, we've spoken with them in the past. We spoke to the president and CEO. Um, you know, the, there's plenty of parking. Um, there are some of the employees that just don't want to pay and um, including, they also don't want to walk uh, farther to, um, to areas where they don't have to pay. So this is the challenge that every community that has a hospital in it deals with. 
in terms of on-street parking. I think that the Transportation Committee has made a uh, important recommendation to Council with this permit process. It's an important first step. And uh, perhaps that we will have to, uh, as we see this on, you know, work for a few weeks, we may have to extend it uh, to include weekends. Um, but, um, you know, as someone who was chair of that committee last term, uh, I know that every time we restrict parking, we basically chase, um, you know, people who don't want to pay for parking and they park on our streets. We chase them around uh, the neighborhood farther and farther from the hospital. And, uh, you know, we even have situations where people are carpooling from uh, where they drop their cars off and then they, they, they carpool to get close to the hospital. So it's, it's, it's frustrating um, that permit I think Councillor Thompson and the members of the Transportation Committee made a first, a good first step. Um, and then let's see uh, how it unrolls for the next few weeks. Absolutely, Your Worship. Thanks so much. And I, I, I understand that the, uh, the matter of finding a solution to the parking around the hospital is, uh, is very much akin to finding peace in the Middle East. So thank you. Good. Now, you said you had a few items. Is there anything else you have for new business? No, that's it. Okay, good. Anyone else for new business? Councillor Alsop. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, and this sort of follows on uh, an earlier conversation we had uh, regarding candidate and residential schools and things of that nature. Uh, this weekend, I was on uh, Facebook on the Belleville Neighbors page, and a young woman named Carly O'Connor uh, had started a really interesting conversation, which very quickly had over uh, 1,500 respondents, um, and, and it turned into a really wholesome discussion about the fact that uh, in our downtown area, we do have uh, crosswalks. Um, that have been, have been uh, done up to, to represent the LGBT members of our community uh, because obviously this is Pride Month, but it is also Native History Month. And uh, that is something that we don't often address as a, as a city. And in their example, there is a picture that a municipality had done where they had done a crosswalk with the eagle feather iconography. And uh, that was something their community had decided was appropriate. Uh, my thought is that uh, this would be something that we could uh, direct staff to reach out to Native leaders to see if such an installation in downtown Belleville is of interest to them. Uh, and then also to look into what that might entail, whether it would be uh, something as, as simple as, as what this other municipality had done, whether it could be a, a mural, something commemorative, uh, an important heritage moment. Uh, some people also suggested uh, something that referenced the original name of Belleville before colonization. Um, so I would like to, to make the motion that uh, staff reach out to Native leaders uh, about an art installation, be it a sidewalk or a mural, something of that nature in downtown Belleville. And then they bring those findings to the uh, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Committee um, so we can bring that back before council. And I think the reason that this is important is this is not a panacea. This is not something that's going to solve um, this community's problems and, and some of the things that they continue to go through on a daily basis. But one of the stated goals of residential schools was cultural genocide. It was to erase the history, the language, and the culture of the people who went through those schools. And perhaps a, a way that we could start to address this problem uh, is by trying to bring more Native art and more Native culture and history into areas like our downtown core, uh, such that it will start conversations, uh, that it will remind people of where we are in the context of how we came to be here, uh, and also, as I mentioned before, uh, almost one in 12 people who live in Belleville uh, are Native and, and walk downtown on a daily basis. And something that makes them feel proud that their culture is being respected and is being presented um, in the place where they live and, and in their ancestral home. Uh, Councillor Alsop, I have to thank you for uh, speaking with me earlier about this today because I got dropped off while you were doing your presentation. So fortunately, I, I know what you were saying. And um, so we're going to ask for city staff to work on a report. And and I um, did you mention that we're going to do that in collaboration with our uh, equity and inclusion committee. Thank you. I, yes. I, I missed that. So so that's uh, that's an excellent work so that we can come back with a real meaningful um, action, um, particular one that is respectful and uh, an appropriate uh, and inclusive. And so um, that's a great suggestion and thank you for, for bringing it forward. Uh, anyone else have any new business items they'd like to bring up? Okay, so uh, then we, uh, we don't have any motions today. Does anybody have any notice of motions they wish to make? Seeing none, uh, we'll move now to announcements. Anyone have any announcements they'd like to make? Uh, we'll start with Councillor Kelly. 
for you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a few points here for announcements. Uh, the Lighting Display Gateway Signage Committee, uh, we've released a fundraising letter. It's available for residents and businesses. It's up on the city website. If you'd like to be a part of the Festival of Lights, um, your opportunity to make a donation will help us uh, with a big celebration, hopefully, uh, come November. Also, too, uh, this is Pride Month. Uh, thanks to the mayor for being a part of the launch uh, at the Queen Sports Wellness Center. And uh, Stacy Love Jolliker is going to be tomorrow's guest speaker. She's the chair of the uh, Bay of Quinney Pride. And I want to get this in. Wish everybody all the best uh, with the pop-ups. I know there are lots of excitement building. Uh, we entered step one last Friday. Really exciting. You could feel the energy in the city. And uh, the numbers are down. So let's uh, look forward to a safe summer and lots of fun at the pop-ups at West Fix Park. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kelly. Councillor Thompson. Yeah, just one announcement. And uh, Councillor Sean Kelly will know about this on Wednesday. Uh, from nine o'clock to three o'clock, um, and I presume it's still on, Councillor Kelly. There's a uh, push uh, on the radio stations for donations uh, to the uh, Enrichment Center. And uh, in memory of Mr. Ro Morris Rollins, uh, and whatever is donated during that time, Mr. Rollins's uh, foundation will match those funds. So it's in recognition of his the death of Mr. Morris Rollins. And I think we, we certainly as a city mm -hmm. and as a council need to recognize the importance of Mr. Rollins in our community. And I was proud to work at the funeral home on Friday during that uh, uh, drive-by. Uh, Mr. Rollins is an important part. And again, it's an opportunity for us to step forward. And again, for Mr. Rollins to make donations to, to the, um, situation of mental health in our community and our world, uh, which he was very adamant about. He fought with, um, with, de with um, depression uh, all of his life, but was very, very successful. So on Wednesday, uh, during that nine to three, and uh, Councillor Kelly may want to confirm that time, uh, there will be uh, a chance for uh, promoted on the radio and they can phone into the Enrichment Center uh, make donations, and again, uh, the um, the Honorable Mr. Morris Rollins will match those funds. Thank you. Thank you. If I can, Mr. Mayor, just uh, uh, that special day is on Wednesday, and it starts at 8 a.m. till 6 p.m., but uh, thank you, Councillor Thompson, for uh, uh, promoting it. Appreciate that. Good. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sanderson. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, would like to mention, uh, given the, the discussion that, that we've been having, is that uh, June 21st is, uh, is National uh, Indigenous uh, Peoples Day. And uh, this particular June 21st is the 25th anniversary of celebrating the uh, diverse cultures and uh, outstanding achievements of uh, First Nations. Uh, Inuit and and the Métis people. So uh, just thought I'd mention that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor McCaw. Thank you through you. Just wanted to take a moment to congratulate Habitat for Humanity on the hiring of their new executive director, uh, Mr. Hank Goodsey. Um, I saw it was in the uh, media, but thought it's important to note that they have hired a new executive director moving forward. Great, and, and while you're there, Councillor McCall, I'll just pass on to you and through you, congratulations to the, um, the, um, the I'm trying to get my, remember the new name of the Hastings, uh, uh, what's the new name of the Humane Society? Oh, now you've got me. It's Humane Society of uh, Hastings Prince, and Prince Edward, I think. Prince yeah. Edward, yes. We changed it, yeah. Yep. No, uh, congratulations on the, on the new name, the new logo as well as your new capital campaign and uh, the appointment of uh, Greg Suds from West City Honda as the chair of that uh, 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 initiative. We are very looking forward to hearing about the exact date where we can all gather for the groundbreaking of the construction of that new facility. Well, Great. thank you, we're excited, thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay, um, I have uh, some proclamations and then some announcements. Um, 
First, I would like to proclaim June as Stroke and Aphasia Awareness Month in the city of Belleville. A stroke occurs every nine minutes in Canada, resulting in physical, emotional, thinking, and communication impairments. I also proclaim June the 20th as the longest day of smiles. The longest day of smiles unites Canadians across the nation to raise funds and awareness for children born with cleft lip, cleft palate, and other facial differences. I would also like to declare today, June the 14th, as the Honourable Justin Stephen J. Hunter Day in the city of Belleville. Judge Hunter is retiring on September the 30th, uh, 2021, after a remarkable 45-year career in our community. His honor graduated from Queen's University in 1971 and from Dalhousie University Law School in May of 1974. He was called to the bar on April the 9th, 1976, where he served our community with honor for 30 years. You know, we don't often think of our judges in their individual role within our justice system. But when you have a career the length of what Justice Hunter has had, you cannot help but notice and appreciate his service to our community. He has helped to keep us safe. He's ensured that everyone's rights are protected. And he's ensured that fairness and compassion is present in our criminal justice system. I congratulate him on this incredible achievement. Thank him for his commitment to justice and our community, and we wish him very well in his retirement. Um, I have some announcements now. I'd like to uh, announce that um, last uh, last week the flag was at half staff in recognition of the uh, the bodies of the 215 Indigenous uh, children that were discovered in Kamloops. Um, the flag was set to uh, come back up la uh, last week. Um, and with the death of Morris Rollins, that uh, real giant in our community, it has stayed down and it'll be coming back up again tomorrow. His, uh, his funeral uh, service was on the weekend as Councillor uh, Thompson has mentioned. And uh, you know, we all have such um, really great stories about uh, a man who you know, spoke softly, um, but made a big impact in our community. And certainly his courage in, um, in speaking to the challenges of depression uh, uh, caused a lot of other people to seek, to seek help and we respect him for that. But those accomplishments also um, are, are you know, overshadowed by the, the impact he's made in our community, not just with the companies he's had, which created homes for over 9,000 residents in our community, uh, but the fact that uh, he founded many businesses, including uh, a national hotel uh, chain, uh, Journey's End, which had hotels all across Canada and in the United States, and which he insisted, insisted that his head office be here in Belleville. And so, um, you know, Mr. Rollins, um, his health was not uh, what it what it had been earlier, and he was struggling in the end, but he is now at peace. And while we mourn his passing, we also celebrate how lucky we were to have him in our community. On uh, May the 27th, I was um, honored to join the Honorable Ahmed Hassan, uh, Minister of Families, Children and Social Development, alongside of MP Neil Ellis. Um, alongside with MP Neil Ellis, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Agriculture and Agri-Food, to announce a $23 million insured loan to help construct the new residential building located at 150 Station Street and 50 Albion Street called the Magnolia Garden Residence. The Magnolia Garden Residence, developed by KGF Capital Realty, will provide Belleville with 103 new rental units. Um, which will be close to public transit, schools, and services for families. The website and the portal for resident applications will be up within the next 30 to 60 days. KGF is aiming for a January 1st occupancy. Uh, a banner with email and telephone contacts will be set up at the site in the next few weeks uh, for interested people to apply. On June the 2nd, I was honored to attend my first ever yarn bombing. I joined uh, Sherry Miracle from the CNIB Deafblind Community Services at Mary Ann Sills Park to honor those who are deafblind by adding knitted squares of yarn to the park fence as a form of street art. I encourage everyone to visit the display and add your own squares as a sign of support as we bring more attention to this, um, 
uh, this uh, affliction. On June the 4th, I joined Stacy Love Jolliker of the Bay of Quinney Pride and acting director of recreation and Cul uh, recreation culture and community services, Peter Ling, for our annual flag raising at the city's Quinty Sports and Wellness Center in honor of Pride Month, which runs for the entire month of June. We wish everybody a happy and safe Pride Month. And last, but certainly not least, on June the 7th, I attended a virtual funding announcement for a new YMCA in the city of Belleville. The federal government has committed over $8.9 million and the provincial government has committed approximately $7.5 million. So thank you so very, very much to Bay of Quinte Member of Parliament, Neil Ellis, and our two local MPPs, Todd Smith and Daryl Cramp, for this funding that makes this project possible. It will be an amazing addition to our growing West End and uh, they hope to begin construction in the late summer or early fall of 2022. The city of Belleville is pleased to donate the land for the new YMCA, and we look forward to welcoming them, them uh, to their new location on Bridge Street West as soon as possible. And over the next uh, couple years, we will also begin to have discussions about what to do with their former site on Victoria Avenue uh, as it becomes our, uh, our property and what we'll do with it. Um, with that, I will uh, ask that uh, we pass a confirmatory bylaw, that bylaw number 2021-120, a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council at its meeting held on June 14th, 2021, be read a first, second, and third time, and finally pass this 14th day of June, 2021. Moved by Councillor Feeney, seconded by Councillor Sanderson. All in favor, it's carried. Can I get a motion to adjourn, please? Moved by Councillor Alsap, seconded by Councillor Mollette. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you.